All right, so Mike's on his way to go get some uh, more trees, I guess, so that we can start building our back wall. So there's a couple of big pieces that we had here left over that we're going to use as our wall, so I'm just going to take the bark off of it and clean it all up while he's gone to do that. Alright, now it looks like you're sitting on the next one that I need. Alright, so here's my new toy. I'm pretty excited. Um, I had this old saw for a long time that I was using uh, that used to belong to my dad and it was doing a great job but it, it was getting old and I uh, was kind of looking forward to maybe upgrading to uh, this one which is the Agawa Canyon Boreal 21 saw. So it's fairly simple to put together. You don't get your glove stuck in it and here you go so I needed to uh, cut that to length which I had measured but looks like there's debris now so I'm gonna have to go clear that up <laughs> before I can actually use my new saw <laughs> <laughs> all right here it goes Oh yeah! <laughs> now we're moving! <laughs> Mike, bring me more. <laughs> You're faster than I am right now. I know. Jeez, that's a beast of a saw. It is. Hey. <laughs> That's impressive. That was a big piece of wood. It took everything out of me, but that is impressive. Wow. Like it. I'm with the other ones. <sighs> nice, it's half debarked. <laughs> that is a great saw. <laughs> Holy crap. Unbelievable. I got another one coming up. 
Coming down? They're coming down. <laughs> We've gone through the processing stage. It's moving on to assembly. I guess assembly storage, assemblies later. <laughs> How's your stripper working for you? <laughs> She's a fine stripper. <laughs> <laughs> More for the pile. Nice big piece. Mm. Cool. That was a lot of work. You know, stripping's not easy. No, I know. <laughs> I thank you on the other camera. You'll see. <laughs> She's out there stripping every single piece that I'm bringing over to her, which is great. big pieces like that you got to bring down I've got I can bring two more if you needed it okay I think the more we have it's not going to be a loss right we can use it somewhere yay <laughs> no absolutely absolutely So we're down at our spring. Uh, we recently purchased one of these trail cam. Uh, it's a Moultrie, I believe it's an M50i. Uh, so we're gonna set it up and see if we catch anything. I'm gonna pick it up in a couple of days. Uh, here's, uh, here's some footage that we uh, captured just in our backyard.
Lucky boy. Here's hot chocolate. Mm. Yeah, not bad. Nice and warm. I'm gonna have more. You're gonna have more? <laughs> mm. Told you it was good. Maybe I'll have more. <laughs> Maybe I should have made two cups. What a fun day. Absolutely fun day. I was pretty exhausted by the end of her, but uh, it's a good kind of tired. The main goal is to have uh, a shelter that's... Please, uh, sir, could I have some more? <laughs> it's kind of semi-permanent, but uh, the block's off uh, all the wind, so we're going to work pretty diligently to, uh, to clear out any gaps and have a nice, strong shelter that uh, hopefully lasts a couple of years. Off my hot chocolate. <laughs> should, should I make another one? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yep. Can't go wrong with hot chocolate. I know. I can't have any more. There's none left. <laughs> There's still some in there. There's still some. Where? In the bottom. You can have a couple sips left. Is there another one? <laughs> no, no, for you. So you can have two sips. I don't want any more. I'm good. Me. I think that's too raw to use. Oh, yeah.
They should be, yeah. That's something. And I got a, some paracord here, and uh, I'm gonna do a knot to, to tie down it to cinch up the the cross beams. Uh, it's again, once again, it's a it's a knot that I learned from Joe Robinette, a very very accomplished YouTuber. It's uh, called a Canadian Jam Knot, and what you do is you just do basically a basic knot overhand then you do another one but you don't tighten it up once you have it looped around the tree just bring your other end in and yank on it and it tightens it up so you do an overhand knot tighten it up you do another one farther down the line but you don't close it Leave it open, then you bring through the other end of cord, and you just tighten her up. 
mat will cinch down. It's a really easy knot. Thank you very much, Mr. Rubbing It. There we go. I'm going to double these up simply because this is going to be supporting our roof as well. So nice. That is really good. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, you know what? No. With the toast, look. No. <laughs> cheers. Speaking of cheers. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong, uh, but uh, my understanding is it's, it's basically as simple an overhand knot into another, uh, which is cinched up, sorry, and then into another op overhand knot, which is loose, and then you just tie it in. But uh, for some reason, it seems to be some of them at random, it's weird, some of them seem to be loose, and I can't understand why. 
So if anybody's got any tips as to what I might be doing wrong, it'd be greatly appreciated. So I just did an overhand knot, cinched it in, did another overhand knot, leaving it loose, an opening there, bringing in the other end, and then just tightening it up. Now, while it is working very well in terms of ratcheting it up, it seems to not hold its tightness like it should. I could be wrong, but it seems like... Now that one seemed to work fine, but some others, they seem to be loose, so I'm not sure if I'm... Maybe every once in a while I do it right, and every once in a while I do it wrong, but that one's nice and tight. So if anybody has any ideas or thoughts as to uh, the proper way of tying it, is it up through the bottom or across the top? That might be what I'm doing wrong, I'm not sure. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so. Might be a little short on this one, but. There we go. And go across and in. And then just ratchet. <clears throat> See now that one getting loose. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. That one's nice and tight. Well, I know it's a bit random. Man, the days are short this time of the year. We uh, managed to get some of the work done. We got the side wall up, we got the frame, and I got a lot of other pieces that have been all uh, trimmed and stripped of their bark. Sandra's been again hard at work at it. We got uh, big beams at the bottom that are going to brace the bottom of each pole on the side wall. This is just a mock up, but we're going to tie up the top with paracord and they're going to cinch up to the bottom. We got our bench here, and uh, this is uh, hopefully going to be uh, a frame for a bed for uh, some winter camping. So uh, still some work to be done, but uh, we're having a good time doing it, and uh, should be back again soon to finish her up, hopefully. Stripping takes a lot of time. Stripping takes a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything takes a lot of time. You see people do these videos online, it seems like they do it all within 15 minutes. You don't. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of stripping here this weekend. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the first part of this shelter build. Uh, the first time we've put this much effort into a shelter that has a bit of permanence to it. Uh, we were hoping to get a lot more done by now but uh, work in progress and we're really enjoying our time doing it. Uh, we've done super shelters before which we complete within a, you know, a couple of hours just with a basic frame and some tarps. But uh, this one we want to put a lot of effort into it, make sure it protects us from the elements and that we can use it for uh, some winter camping excursions. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and take care. And we'll see you again soon. We're going to try to wrap this one up. <laughs>